So Dalvin Cook signs with the Jets. Yeah, I'm not going to you know sit here and say I broke that news fucking four months ago. If you find me one tweet, one source that said they did it before me, I will pay you $100. Nobody did it before me. <laughs> Nikki Leaks, we out here. So Dalvin Cook joins New York. What I want to say for both of these transactions, I think people like read way too far into this about like, oh, they don't trust this guy or, oh, this guy's not what not healthy, whatever. NFL teams just want to sign good players. And I'm not saying Dalvin Cook's like an elite player at this point or Zeke is even close to that. But having those guys on the team is a big plus just from an NFL standpoint. So what I think is going to happen is now this gives them leverage. Now this gives them flexibility to let Brees not have to take on a 20-touch workload for the first eight weeks of the season. So I think Dalvin Cook comes in here and Dalvin Cook is a dude that they lean on for the first half of the season. We'll see how it goes. You know, I think like Dalvin Cook's obviously played in Minnesota. Aaron Rodgers played against him for his entire career. Has probably seen him, probably pushed to have Dalvin Cook sign with the team. I, I think we've probably pretty clearly seen Dalvin Cook on the decline over the last couple of years just in terms of like his talent level. And I get it. He finished like relatively high in fantasy last year, but he's not the same back he was during his prime. I think he'll be fine for um, for fantasy this year. If I'm drafting one of the two, this is one of those situations where I'm probably avoiding, but if I am taking one, it's like I, I'd rather have Brees Hall, but I'm only drafting him if I get him at value because I think what happens is Cook's probably the guy for the first half of the year. Once Brees Hall is back, they'll have a two-headed committee, but I think Brees Hall is way more likely to do better things for your fantasy team on a limited workload. I just updated my rankings yesterday, which again are in the draft guide, promo code BDGE on Underdog Fantasy. After the updates, I have Brees Hall as my RB23. So that's pretty far down, but but I really think you're probably not getting anything more than an RB2 for the first half of the season at minimum. We don't know how the pass catching duties are going to split up. We don't know how the two and four minute drills are going to split up. We don't know what the goal line work is going to look like. So he's my RB23. I have Dalvin Cook as RB28. So again, I take Hall over Cook straight up, but I'm not reaching for either of these guys because we don't really know how this is going to play out. Moving over to New England. So Zeke signs in New England, and th this this was just a clear case of like one. I love how people like on Twitter, people are like, oh, I can't, but like obviously they were going to sign another uh, running back in this backfield. Like this shouldn't hurt Ramondre Stevenson at all. It's like, fam, those are the same dudes that were probably like Kevin Harris and Pierre Strong are going to dominate as the twos in New England. Like, shh. Shut your mouth and know your role. Am I going to sit here and say this doesn't hurt Ramondre? Of course it does. You know why? Because Ramondre's weakest point of his game is short yardage work and goal line work. And I think Zeke probably takes most of the goal line work here. And that's where the problem kind of ensues for Ramondre because he was awesome last year, right? Caught a ton of passes, ended up going for like 1,400, 1,500 yards from scrimmage, only scored like six touchdowns. And I think this caps his upside again. What, what I think the big takeaway here, though, is like Ramondre is still the guy for me. Ramondre is still the RB12 for me in my rankings, but he drops down a tier where I was like comfortable taking if, if Zeke never signed, I would have been comfortable taking him at that 2-3 turn at like the 2-11, 2-12, 3-1, 3-2. As someone that I think has dar had dark horse upside to be the RB1 overall in fantasy. Now, yes, he's still RB12 for me, which is dropped down a couple spots in my rankings overall. But overall now, he's at that 3-4 turn for me. So he's like the 37th overall ranked player for me. So I'm talking about late third, early fourth round. He's still going to catch a ton of passes. He'll be the main pass catching guy there. And he'll get most of the full drives in between the 20s. But you take away the touchdown upside, that becomes ugly. And in super flex leagues, I got him ranked as like my 47th player, which is the end of the fourth, early fifth round. And Zeke, it, it, the thing with Zeke is like, Zeke's never going to get you're not going to have drives that are exclusive to Zeke, right? You're not going to have drives where like he takes the entire drive. I don't think, I think he will very much be a utilization back. He'll be a breather back. So he'll get some carries in between the twenties. He will get, you know, a few plays in a row, obviously, but won't be used in pass catching situations, two and four minute drills, but he'll be used on the goal line. So he doesn't have a ton of upside. There might be games where he scores like two touchdowns, but you'll never know when to actually play him. So Zeke for me is more of just like a thorn in the side of Ramondre. He is my running back 40 right now. So he's, he's pretty far down in the rankings. Maybe I'll move him up to like RB 37 or 38 or something like that, but I don't, I don't see him going much further up in my rankings. He's outside of my top hundred. My, my, top 110 picks in both super flex and one quarterback leagues you can make the argument that like it's a good handcuff to have as well as standalone value but i i don't know i i think this again is just like get a good veteran player on the team because we need depth there and we don't have a lot of players that we trust more so than like Ramondre can't carry the entire workload which obviously even even looking back at Ramondre last year with Damian Harris, he was still averaging like 16 to 17 touches a game or opportunities a game when Damian Harris was active. I still think that's his role. He's definitely still the RB1. He's still going to catch a ton of passes. He's still going to get a lot of valuable work, but the RB1 overall upside that I was kind of like predicting as an underrated shot is 
pretty much off the table now because his touchdown upside is probably capped at like seven, I would say. So that's why I'm looking at those two situations. I'm looking at you to go down there, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, if you want to support the brand, head over to Underdog Fantasy, use promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10 or more, they'll double whatever you put down. You'll get the draft guide for free. And we've got our own BDGE Superflex tournament launching on their platform next Thursday. Now y'all can untuck your shirts. Yeah. <laughs>